Hey, it's Rainiacs, Mel the Train Tutor, back in the studio and back with another Let's Make tutorial for you. Now, we're continuing our Countryside Scenic series. We did uh, dirt roads, tracks and paths in the last video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, tarmac roads and cobblestone roads. We're going to be looking at a couple of simple techniques and a really more in-depth technique for doing cobblestone roads. So, let's get cracked on, eh? Come on. Right, let's get started with the most simplest, okay, our tarmac roads. Now, obviously, as always, yeah, I'm starting off with my expanded PVC. Yeah, you can get scraps of this stuff from sign printers. Yeah, it's three mil. I beveled the edges with a sharp blade. Yeah, I've covered that plenty of times, don't need to go over that again. And then to actually get our, our tarmac texture, dead simply, I'm using sandpaper. Okay, now this is like the hobby default, you know, it's, it's what we've been doing in the hobby for donkey's years, yeah, and it is literally just a matter of cutting it out, yeah, so it fits your base, and then you need to obviously glue it down. Now, with this being EPVC, I could use PVA, and it would hold it down enough for me to get more paint and that sort of stuff on, you know, but PVA and EPVC isn't the best, and to speed the process up, yeah, I'm going to be using this stuff, my fast tack. Now, the benefit of this is I can lay it down, I can put it down, and we can be continuing with this tutorial very quickly. Yeah, so my next job is dead simple. Give this a shake, give it a spray on there, and then simply lay this down and smooth it out. And that will give us the base texture of our tarmac road. There you go, all done, stuck down. And like I say, I could have used PVA, but, you know, I'd be waiting watch got a little while for that to sort of set and that sort of stuff. So, it's much quicker doing it this way. Reposition it a little. Right, next job is obviously because it is 3 mil EPVC and I'm going to be gritting and that sort of stuff, I don't want it to warp. So, much like with the what you call it, dirt stone roads, I'm going to be using some milliput and I'm going to be putting two rolls just down there. So, let me get this mixed up. So, I've mixed up my milliput and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it right on the edge because this will help hold this edge down. Okay, and this is the edge that we need to blend in, because otherwise when we put our grit on, we'll have like a little step in it, yeah? And it is a simple matter of, let me bring it up for you, yeah? Put your, 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 down, put your, your roll down and then just tap it down, yeah? All you're trying to do is get it to cover the edge of the sandpaper and the edge of the PVC, yeah? So get it a bit rough, and then once you've got it roughly where you want it, yeah, a little bit of water, yeah, and you can start to smooth it out a little. Yeah? So, that's my next job. There you go. Right, I'll crack on. So there we are, that's all the milli putting done, and as you can see, it's looking rather spanking. Now, when that dries, I'll have no worries about, what you call it, it warping whatsoever, and I can go on, I can just put some PVA down the side and add me grit as normal. Yeah, it's one, one of the things I'm gonna do while I wait for it to dry. I mean, it's not warped at the minute, but, you know, I will put a couple of tubs on it and watch it just to keep it flat while it dries. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you don't have milliput, you can use uh, lollipop sticks, popsicle sticks, yeah, and super glue them down and cover them over filler. You can use parcel tape, the brown stuff, and put it underneath. That helps prevent warping. I just really prefer milliput. It gives me a really nice hard edge and a little bump, and you know I like it. Right. Next job is while they dry, we'll let those dry and we'll come back when they're gritted. Right guys, our Millie puts all dry and it is, it's sturdy as hell. It really is. Right, next job to do is to get a little bit of grit on this. I mean, I could paint and flock straight over it, but I wanted to get a little grit on it. So what I've got is obviously I've got a brush. I've got some PVA over here. Yeah, uh, a little bit of water mixed in with it. It's got some brown bits off my palette, but don't worry about that. These things happen, and all I'm going to do is just give that edge a bit of a coat of PVA. You see all the brown bits on it? Shocking, isn't it? What sort of standard is this? Yeah, so get some PVA on it. And then very quickly, yeah, just with our mixed sort of grit, which is sharp sand, coarse sand, and some small stones, and I think there's some big ones in there from where I've thrown it in from having a mix. And all I'm going to do is, just with the, the sort of sand, yeah, is just give it a quick, yeah, just like that. So I'm just going to do the rest of it now. So that's it all gritted up, guys. All we need to do now is just leave it, leave it for that PVA to dry, and then we can start painting. Right? I'll leave it to dry. 
Right, next up we're looking at cobblestone roads and we're going to do them pretty much exactly the same as we did our sandpaper tarmac. Yeah, I've said we're going to not use sandpaper. What we're going to use is embossed wallpaper. Now, I've got a couple of strips here. I nipped up to B&Q before coming in. That's a sort of a hard uh, hardware chain in the UK. Yeah, and I went looking and I've got a couple. There's all sorts of embossed wallpaper, but I've got a couple. I've got though, that one. That's quite nice. Yeah, and then I've got that one, which is quite nice. Yeah, and then I've got, I, I spotted this one, and this is from their premium range. And uh, of all of them, yeah, this is my favourite. It is the most cobblestone looking. Okay, now this is £16 a roll. 16 bloody pound. <laughs> yeah, but here's the good thing. Yeah, because they expect you to take samples home to stick on your wall and see if you like it, you can go up and they wherever they will sell wallpaper, they'll have an open roll next to it. And you can rip off a good two, three foot of it with no one batting an eyelid. Yeah, and a two, three foot sample of this 16 pound wallpaper is enough to do all the roads you want. So, essentially, it's free. And... You've now got a reason to actually go wallpaper shopping with the other half if she's the sort or that he's the sort that drags you around to do that sort of stuff. Kerry's going to hate it. <laughs> she's going to absolutely hate me next time she does it. Yeah, now, obviously, exactly the same as our, what you call it, our tarmac. Yeah, I could glue it down with PVA. I'm going to use a spray adhesive because it's a bit quicker. Yeah, so we'll get that on and then I'll put the Millie put on and the grit and all that sort of stuff. So let's crack on. They are all stuck down, and you can see what I mean. Expensive wallpaper really does make good cobblestones, doesn't it? Right, the next job is just like the sandpaper, a bit of milliput, roll it out into a long strip, and then push it down on the edges. Right, so that one's done now. If I bring it up, there you go. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Gotta love the premium wallpaper. Thank you, B&Q. Yeah, obviously, now I've got to leave this to dry, and then I'll be adding the grip. There you are, milliputs all dry, and I've just PVA'd and gritted it. Just exactly the same as we did our tarmac roads, and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Right, next job is leave this one to dry and watch call it. Uh, while this dries, we'll crack on with a different sort of technique for cobblestones, eh? Let's engrave them. Now, while they are drying, I'll show you one final technique. Now, the diorama guys, yeah, they will cut individual cobblestones and lay them out. But I want to show you a little bit of a trick based on that. Okay, but sort of an engraving. Now, uh, there's lots of ways of working with foam, yeah, for street effects, yeah. I've got 10 mil foam here, high density. I've got some rollers here. Uh, these are from Green Stuff World. We've already covered a video on these. I'll throw a link up. Yeah, but you can roll these across and you can get lovely textures with them. Yeah, but obviously, if you don't want to buy the roller, you can do it yourself. Okay, now, I've done lots of videos on engraving, and you could get a biro pen and draw all your cobblestones out. But what I've got is I've got an old paintbrush that the end came out of. And when the end came out of, I decided I would squish the ferrule, that's this metal bit, yeah, down into a rough square shape. Okay, and I first saw this on Dread Lund's channel, Solvent Abuse UK. I'll throw a link up to that as well. Yeah, and he was using it in Das Modeling Putty to do bricks on his Arab buildings. Okay, I've seen it a few other places since then, but here's what I'm using it for. Okay, and dead simple, all I'm gonna do is that. And if I bring it up, see? How simple is that? Now, obviously, I've gotta do all of this. <laughs> it's not the quickest one on the, in the book by far, but does look beautiful so I'm gonna crack on I'm gonna put all my imprints along here and basically give us a cobblestone effect all the way along here all right so here you have it yeah it took about five minutes to do which is obviously longer than the watch wallpaper method but a lot quicker than inscribing it and if I bring it up you can see it produces lovely deep cobblestones now these are still a little bit flat yeah so I need a little bit more texture on them so ball of uh, tin foil rolled up yeah and just roll it over just like that. I'll just do one bit and you can see. And if I bring it up and compare it, yeah, you can see that they've now got all the wear compared to them being quite flat. So I'll very quickly do the same over here. There you are, all done. Now the next job is obviously I need to toughen this up a bit. I never recommend using just blue foam for basing, okay? It needs toughening up at the edges. These thin edges, they're too thin, yeah, they'll just get cracked as you put them down, that sort of stuff. So for that, 
Yeah, we're skipping the millipot and we're going for the cheap option. Yeah, which is our filler. As usual, I am using B&Q dial. Yeah, get a bit of a finger's worth. And all my concern is, yeah, just down this edge. I just want to rub it into this edge like this. Yeah, because that will toughen that up lovely. Yeah, ready for taking some grit on it. We might even not need to grit it. So there you are. Yeah, and like I say, just a little bit on your finger. Smooth it up and down. Now the diorama guys, what they do is they actually put filler in between all those cobblestones. Yeah, but you've got to remember they do them as individuals. Yeah, we're not going to do that. We don't need to do that. Yeah, because our paint and PVA and all that sort of stuff is going to fill those perfectly anyway. Right, I'll crack on with getting this on and then we'll come back when it's done. So there you have it, that's the edges all filled up, okay? And all we need to do now is just leave this to dry, okay? Yes, it's got a little bit of a brown stain on it. I used my brush to, to sort of clean out some excess filler. Yeah, it left a little bit of a brown mark. <laughs> Hey-ho, yeah, it'll get covered by painting. Right, let's leave this to dry and then we'll come back and grit it. Right, the filler's all dry now and it's toughened it up for us. Now, next job is to get our grit down, which is like the other pieces. Yeah, once again, bit of watered down PVA, just gonna brush it on with the black bits again. Yeah. So there we are guys, all gritted up. Yeah, don't they look lovely? I am wondering whether I should, no, no, I was wondering whether I should put some filler, watered down fill in between them, but they're fine. I'm not sure if they're too deep or not, but they look fine, don't they? If you're doing too deep, you can always get like watered down filler and just brush it backwards and forwards, then wipe it off with a cloth and it makes them look like cement, but I reckon that's fine. Right, we'll leave these to right and then we'll come back uh, and we'll, we'll get painting all these pieces up, eh? Right, I better crack on. So here we are, all dry. So if I bring them up, yeah, there's a sandpaper one. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Perfect texture, no warping whatsoever. Yeah, our wallpaper, wallpaper cobbles. They look great once they've been gritted, don't they? Really do. Right, and then finally our engraving, yeah? Beautiful, isn't it? Do you know what? I'm looking at this and I'm wondering whether we should do that filler thing. Ah, uh, ah, sod it. Yeah, I can show you how it's done, can't I? Right, okay, there is a technique, as I mentioned earlier, putting filler in between the bricks, yeah, to make them a little bit smoother and so those indents aren't as bad. Okay, so let me get set up for that and I'll be back in a second. Right then, i uh, got my filler, okay. Yeah, a uh, stiff brush, stiff bristle brush. What I'm gonna do is, I'm basically gonna brush some filler onto my brush like that, yeah? But I'm not gonna put it straight down, I'm gonna put it on my messy, messy palette, yeah? And then I'm gonna get some water out my messy, messy water. Everything's messy around here, isn't it? And I'm gonna thin it down a bit, yeah? If you put it on neat straight onto them, it can be a right pain in the backside because it's really thick and it takes a lot of work to work into it. Okay, but if you thin it down first on a pallet, yeah, just by adding a bit of water, yeah, you get that. And then what you can do, it's dead simple, is just come along and brush it. Yeah, so if I do that, and if I bring it up very quickly, yeah, see where we're going with this? Okay, the trick is not to thin it down too much when you're brushing to, to completely wipe the filler away. Okay, you want to fill the gaps, but you, you don't want to watch because it sort of wash it away as you're trying to thin it down. Now, the other thing that you do is, yeah, damp rag. If I bring this up, do you see how it's all over the tiles? Now, if I get my damp rag, and I do that, yeah. See the difference compared to the tiles next to it, how it sort of makes them far more subtle. Yeah? And that's all there is to it, guys. It literally is thin it down, brush it on, give it a wipe. Remember, you can come back and do another coat after it sets. Yeah, I don't think you've got to do it in one hit, guys. Right, I'm just going to give this a quick one and then we'll get it dry and I'll come back and we'll start painting, yeah? There we are, all done. Doesn't it look spiffing? There's a couple of spots I could have gone a little bit thicker on, but... You get the comparison and you've got the technique, so I'm happy with it. Right, next job is obviously we've got to get these painted up. Now obviously, you know, we do need to seal the grit, yeah, because it's only glued down and you need to seal it down. So with that in mind, and because we're doing roads, yeah, I've gone for a very dark grey. Now this is my standard house paint, interior paint, latex paint if you're in the US. Don't use latex paint in the UK. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add, if I can squeeze it out, 
about a sixth PVA to it. Yeah, and all that's going to do is it's just going to help all the grit and everything bind. It's going to toughen up this, this what you call it, this wallpaper. Yeah, so just give it a stir, mix it in. And then all it is is a matter of just simply painting it on. Yeah, so it's not really hard, is it? <laughs> yeah, pick it up. Yeah, make sure it gets a decent coat on this sandpaper. You don't want too many blobs on here. Yeah, the reason being is that you'll hide that texture. Yeah, and then just get it over that grit. Right, it's exactly the same on all of these. So I'm going to do this on all of these and then we'll come back when it's done. Right, guys, that's them all base coated and I put the dark grey on. Yeah, and as you can see, and I've also gone for a dark brown. Exactly the same standard house paint, my usual stuff, just to do the edges with. We're going to cover them in flock at the end anyway. And then if I bring up our cobblestones, yeah. Now, don't worry about getting it a perfect solid colour. You'll always struggle when you're going over something like to get a really, really solid colour, unless you're using something like a spray primer. Get it to sort of 99% and the rest you can figure out as you go. Yeah, like in this case, if I bring this up, yeah, you can see all our different textures on that. Yeah, but if I bring it up really close, you can see the odd little white spot. Don't worry about those. Yeah, you could put another layer on to get it completely solid, but the chances are that you'll still get a white spot somewhere. We'll, f we'll clear it up when we do the washes, but the next thing that we need to do is do our highlighting, okay? And for this, yeah, what I've got is, I've got some house paint. Now, I'm not using it straight out of my bottle like I normally do, because that's thinned down. I wanted the really thick stuff for this. Yeah, and all I've done is, I've taken the really thick stuff, yeah, I've spread it out on a bit of cardboard, take all the excess off, and then it's time for dry brushing, yeah? So, all I'm gonna do is dry brush all of these peop pe people, pieces. Yeah, now I'm gonna use the same technique on all of them. Yeah, I am gonna go completely one way and off the piece before I come down the other way. I'm not gonna change direction on the piece. And I'm gonna go very, very lightly to start off with because that's, at the start, is when you're likely to get the most splodges. Okay, so, I'm just gonna start. Yeah, and just, Gently dry brush it. Yeah, do you see what I'm doing? Right, I'll just crack on with this. I'll do all this piece, I'll do that piece, and I'll do a little bit on there, and then we'll come back when that's done, yeah? So there we are, I've dry brushed them up. Now, I've done them in that standard grey, then I've lightened it up by mixing in just a little bit of cream. When you lighten grey up for concrete and cobblestones and stuff like that, don't use white. Use a cream, yeah? It gives a more natural look. So, yeah, our really simple tarmac. Yeah, that's quite nice. It's still a bit stark at the minute, yeah. Once we get the our flock on it, it'll look a lot better. But, there you go. It does look lovely. Yeah. Next up, we've got our simple cobblestones. Yeah, it's a bit mind melting that in it the repetitive pattern but it works really well works really well yeah and then finally yeah the one that we spent the most time on yeah and as you can see look at the detail on that it's beautiful isn't it okay now they are all a bit monotone because they're all greys even that we mixed a bit of cream in with them so what i've got is i've got my palette here yeah uh, i've got a couple of browns and you know i've got a bit of gray and that sort of stuff a lot of water and all i'm going to be doing is taking just a little he says yeah and then coming along yeah and i'm just going to be working this over the piece yeah and at the same time get my cloth yeah just to wipe it off and do you see how you get that sort of very subtle shading in between the lines that's what I'm aiming for. So what I'm going to do, show you again now, you can actually see it on camera, yeah? Is paint it on specifically into the ridges. I don't want to rush too hard because I don't want to sort of reactivate that paint. Yeah, then get my cloth, just quick wipe over the top. And I'll change the, the tone of it. Okay, it makes it more natural, gets that look in it, in, in, in between the rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a play with these as well. Yeah, I'm going to put a couple of different shades on that using exactly that technique. Okay, and then when we're done, I'll bring it back, yeah? Right, so I'll put the washes on, and very subtly, if I bring this one up, you can just see sort of a hint, just along the edges, and a few places in between, of just a little different shade. Like I say, until we actually get the flock on it, it will still look quite stark, okay? But it, I went a little bit heavier on this one, 
and you should be able to see a lot more of the colour coming through as we've tried to get the mud tracks in and that sort of stuff. You can spend a lot longer on this sort of stuff, you know. The diorama guys, they go crazy with it, painting each individual stone and stuff like that. In our case, yeah, we just need something that, you know, at a distance looks really good. And this does, okay? So it's sort of a... So 50-50 fix between, you know, what we do as, as war game terrain builders and the diorama guys. You know what I mean? Right, the next job is I need to get these flocked up. So I'll get my stuff together and I'll be back in a second, guys. Right, they're all painted up now and it's time to get our flock on as usual. Now, it's typical, yeah, I've got a bit of watered down PVA on my brush. I've got my standard hobby flock and I've got a highlight for spot highlighting and a shade for, for spot shading. Okay, and all I'm going to do is grab my piece, put some PVA on it. Right, so my PVA is on, and all I want to do is very quickly just put a little bit of a highlight across the top. Yeah, so a couple of spots just with my one tone. Yeah, just like that. So if I bring it up, there you go, just with that one. Yeah, and then next with my green. Oh, you git! It's not going to fit, is it? Okay. Sprinkling it is always the way. It's a bit too big. And if I bring it up, there you go. Beautiful, isn't it? Right, I'll crack on with doing these and I'll bring them back when they're done, eh? Right, guys, they're all flocked up now, so picking them up. Yeah, and you can see by adding a little bit of green, it just makes them beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of loose bit there. <laughs> right, and then onto our simple cobblestones. Yeah, such a massive difference. Really does make a massive difference. And then finally, our more intricate cobblestones. And you can see where I put a little couple of splodges of PVA down and sprinkled just a little extra on there. Yeah, just to sort of, you know, break it up a bit. Yeah, and overall, it's worked wonderful. Now, the last thing, as always, is our clump foliage. Now, I've got some uh, loose clump off the, I've ripped off a foreground tree, and I've got some army painter tufts. Yeah, as always with these sort of things, yeah, grab the tufts, stick in a little bit of PVA over here. Yeah, that says a little bit. Yeah, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come along and we'll whack this down here. Yeah, yeah, and we put a tuft on it. See, simple. Yeah, and it's exactly the same with the clump follies. You just have to get a decent clump. Yeah, get your PVA. Yeah, so you've got about that much on it, just a little. Then come in and pick your spot, drop it down. And that will hold that down until we seal these pieces up. So the next job I need to do is very quickly get these all clumped and tough, tufted, tufted up. Is that a word? Who knows? I'll get cracked on with that anyway. There you are, that's them all tuft and, and clump foliage up. So right, let's start off with our simple sandpaper tarmac. Yeah, there you go. Simple, easy, cheap, yeah, and produces really, really beautiful results, guys. Absolutely beautiful results. I mean, you can put oil stains and all sorts and you can go to town on these things, but as always, you know, I'll show you the basics of the techniques and that sort of stuff and you guys run with it. Right, moving on, we've got our 16 pound a roll wallpaper. Lucky we get it for free, innit? You gotta love samples. Yeah, but doesn't that look good? Yeah, lovely texture. Once again, when you're looking up for wallpaper and that sort of stuff, just look at the various textures you can get. I showed you a few. Yeah, this is the one I like the most and it produces really good results. Remember just how quick these techniques are. Okay, and then finally, yeah, if you want to go full bore and engrave them in, and you know what I mean. Now, this this isn't even full bore for me. Yeah, this is sort of medium bore, shall we say. Yeah, but a little bit of fl uh, a flock in between the clumps, and overall, it looks beautiful. Now, you could do it, I've, with all of these, I've gone from dark and I've highlighted up with a dry brush method. Don't forget, yeah, you can go light and then wash down if you want to play more with your browns and your colours and that sort of stuff. And I suggest that's the way you want to go if you want more dirty roads and play with colours. Go lighter, wash it down. But if you're looking for a quick and easy, yeah, a bit of dry brushing produces 
some beautiful results. Shame it isn't yellow, isn't it? We could have followed the yellow brick road. Right, guys, uh, let's set off for the long shot, eh? So guys, that's it for this tutorial. Now you've got a few techniques to be playing with. We've got the sandpaper, we've got the wallpaper, and then we've got that engraving technique. Okay, so you've got plenty to be working with. Now as always, yeah, if you've got anything to add to this video, yeah, throw it down there in the comments. If you've got any questions, anything you'd like me to clear up, or any other techniques you'd like me to look into, down in the comments down below. I always answer my comments. And as always, yeah, if you really do like this, you know, give it a like, and if you know someone who needs it, share it with them. Now as always, more importantly for me, yeah, I'm shouting out now for your support. Now as you know, yeah, I'm sort of like trying to make this happen at full time and doing the trade stuff full time. But that relies on one in a thousand of you, yeah, being good folks and saying that, yeah, I'll throw a dollar your way or I'll throw you a bit on PayPal. Yeah, and I genuinely can't do this. So if you are one of those one in a thousand, you've been sitting there, you've been watching, you look forward to the videos, yeah, please consider it. It only takes five minutes to, to set up and it doesn't really, it's a dollar to you guys, yeah, but it's, it's all of this to me. Yeah, and I genuinely couldn't do it without your support, guys. So, if you really would like to help me, and this is helping you, these tutorials are helping you, yeah, please consider the patron thing, yeah? If not, there's PayPal down below, and you can send a one-off if you're not into a monthly thing. If you're new to the channel, yeah, you can subscribe up there. And then, if you're looking for more videos, well, they, they'll appear at the bottom of the screen. But in the meantime, you've got the techniques. I can't wait to see what you post to the Terraniacs group, guys. Yeah, so... Get cracked on, I'll see you in the next vid. All the best, yeah? Tara.